In this lesson, we will learn how to work with buffer curves. Let's hit play in this scene. You'll notice that our singer will slide in. Eventually, he'll break into an air guitar maneuver and then victory pose. All right, sweet. And by the way, if you'd like to learn how to rig this model, we rig him in pushing your character rigs beyond the basics. We cover techniques for holding volume and ultimately getting some better results out of your control rigs. And then you can take it a step further. You can use this as a foundation to build upon. And that's when things get really exciting. All right, but let's say we jump into the lesson. We can use buffer curves to compare and contrast different results in our animations to figure out what would work best for a certain performance. So in this case, what I'd like to do is use the buffer curve system to maybe lower the character just a bit when he lands around frame 96. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. We'll go to the show menu to bring back our control objects. We can then go to panels, perspective, and switch to the perspective camera. We were viewing through the shot camera, so let's go to make sure we're working with the perspective view. That way we can go in and grab the center of gravity control. And now with that selected, we can then jump to the graph editor. All right, sweet. I like to go ahead and focus on the translate Y channel. And from there, let's go ahead and look for the key that's responsible for lowering the character's center of gravity. And that's on frame 97. Now watch this. Let's go ahead and move to the view menu and we'll turn on show buffer curves. Now watch, if we were to now take this keyframe on 97, let's go ahead and grab our move tool, and we'll start to move this key, you'll notice that we have a printout that shows us where the F curve was originally. Now watch this, you'll notice that if we were to go to the curves menu, we can choose swap buffer curve and it's going to revert back to where it was before, but now we can see a printout of the change that we made. So if we don't quite like where the F curve was originally, we can go ahead and go back to curves and choose swap buffer curve and it's going to jump back to where we've made that change. How cool is that? So again, this is a great way to kind of compare your work with what you might have started with. And that way you can kind of figure out what would work best for your performance. So I might lower the character just a bit more on 97. I might also delay this key just to make it a bit springier, this action. And then I'll go ahead and take this key on 95. I'll drop the out tangent just to smooth this out just a bit more. So if I were to go ahead and minimize the graph editor, you'll notice that the singer is going to drop down a little bit lower and then he's going to spring up a bit faster. Oh, cool. You can hit play to see that. Nice. And if you like those changes, you can go ahead and jump back to the curves menu and watch you can go to buffer curve snapshot and it's going to create a brand new snapshot with the changes that you've made to the F curve cool so as we start to now move this key on 98 you can see there's our new printout I'm going to use the swap tool to swap it back to where it was before great here's something else that's really cool underneath curves You'll notice that when we go to buffer curve, take a look, we could actually work with referenced animation curves. In the past, we weren't able to do that in Maya, but we can do that now, which is really exciting. What that means is if we have an animation that has been referenced into our scene and we'd like to make adjustments, we can do so. But really important, let's go ahead and head over to our preferences. Underneath file references, we'd want to make sure that we have allow edits on reference animation curves on because without that on we can't really work with the referencing features for function curves now why would we want this off then well sometimes we don't want to alter any of our referenced animation because at that point once it's referenced it's basically finalized but if you notice a few kinks that need to be ironed out you can go ahead and turn this on and now you can start to work with reference function curves Cool, so I just wanted to show you the buffer curve system in Maya. Again, it's a great way to kind of compare and contrast your work just so you can figure out 
what would work best for your character's performance.